Hi, Scott Whitley here. Hope you're doing well. In this lesson, I'm going to show you five easy to learn repeatable patterns that'll work over just about any slow 12 bar blues. Stick around because later in the lesson, I've got an extra bonus tip that'll help you progress even further with your 12 bar playing. Plus, you'll get the chance to win a Planet Waves guitar rest, a signed copy of my solo CD in my shoes, and a one hour one to one private lesson over Skype with me. So, with that being said, roll that intro. short clip was me demonstrating the kind of blues we're going to be working over today. It's commonly known as a slow 12 bar blues and it's a 12 8 feel. In this lesson we're going to be working over the quick change version of the 12 bar blues in the key of A. If you're completely new to 12 bar blues it might be worth checking out easy 12 bar blues bass lesson one. The link is on the screen now and in that lesson I talk about the format of the 12 bar blues and how to navigate your way around it so it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. In a moment, I'm going to show you five easy to learn patterns that work really well over this kind of blues. Just before we get into it, if we haven't met before, my name's Scott Whitley and I regularly produce content like this to help you become a better bass player. So please hit like, click subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notified whenever I make a new video. Pattern one. This classic line, or variations of it, you'll hear on literally hundreds of 12-bar blues recordings. It's made up from notes 1, 3, 5 and 6 from the major scale, and it goes like this. The first three notes we're going to play are 5th fret on the E string, an A, 4th fret on the A string, and then 7th fret on the A string. And that's a root 3rd and 5th in the key of A. And we phrase that like this. And that just leaves three more notes to finish off this pattern completely. And they are notes six, five, and three from the major scale. So that's fourth fret on the D string, seventh fret on the A string, and fourth fret on the A string. And when we add that to the first three notes, it sounds like this. Once you've got that comfortable over the A, the one chord, we need to be able to play over the four and the five chord. In the key of A, the four chord is a D and the five chord is an E. Just to clarify, the four looks like this. And the five like this. notation and chord sequences for this lesson can be found in a free downloadable worksheet. The link is on the screen now. It's also in the description below the video. Now let's listen to how pattern one sounds over the entire 12 bar sequence. Here we go.
Here's another classic line that works really universally. This one uses notes one, five, flat seven, and six, which works really well over the seventh or dominant chords that make up this kind of 12 bar blues. Once again, the first note we're gonna play is the fifth fret on the E string, which is an A, that's our root. And then we're gonna play seventh fret on the A string, fifth fret on the D string, seventh fret on the A string again, fourth fret on the D string, and then finally, seventh fret on the A string. And when you put that together, it sounds like this. So from an interval point of view, those notes are the root, the fifth, the flat seven, and the six. Just like in pattern one, once you've got that comfortable, learn to play it over the D and the E, that's the four and the five, and then you can play the whole 12 bar sequence with it. Pattern three. Pattern three just uses notes one, five, flat seven, an octave. And the first note we're gonna play, surprise, surprise, is the fifth fret on the E string, a low A. And then after that, we play the seventh fret on the A string. We play the fifth fret on the D string. We play the seventh fret on the D string. And then we play the fifth fret on the D string again. And then finally, the seventh fret on the A string. And that sounds like this. And that's all there is to pattern three. Once again, you need to learn to play that over the one, the four and the five chord, and then just move it around accordingly for the entire 12 bar blues. Pattern four. Pattern four is a little more tricky to play than the previous patterns as we're introducing some slides and hammer-ons, but this does add a lot of flair and makes for a really cool sounding line. The first thing we do is play two low A's, fifth fret on the E string, and then get your third finger and fret the seventh fret on the E string, pluck that and slide it up to the ninth, and then get your first finger on the seventh fret on the A string, and then third finger on the ninth fret on the A string. So one more time, two low A's with your first finger. Then you get your third finger and you fret the seventh fret on the E string. Plug, slide, first finger down on the seventh on the A, and then your third finger down on the ninth. And when you put that together, it sounds like this. So after we play this, our third finger is covering that ninth fret on the A string. We play that again, and we hammer on to the 10th fret with the little finger, but quickly like this. So when you put that together, it sounds like this. Then immediately, with your first finger, play the seventh fret on the A string, and then play the seventh fret again, and do a hammer on to the ninth fret. Just to recap, first finger on the seventh fret on the A string, you pluck that, then you pluck it again, and hammer on to the ninth. Just before I play that with the drums, I'm gonna play it slowly so you can hear how that links together. Here we go.
One more time. And with the drums. And that just leaves two small moves to make to finish off pattern four. With the first finger, play the seventh fret on the A string one more time. And then you get your middle finger and you play the eighth fret on the E string and you hammer that on to the ninth quickly like this. So those two moves together sound like this. Let's string it all together. Sounds like this. of course the same drill you just learn that over the one the four and the five chord and you got yourself another way to play a slow 12 bar blues pattern five Pattern five, our final pattern, has a really bluesy sound about it because we play a flat three or a minor third into a major third, and it's a really common move in blues. The first thing we do is play two low A's, fifth fret on the E string, and then with our middle finger, we play the eighth fret on the E string, that's the minor third, and then we play the ninth fret, that's the major third, and then with our first finger, we play two of the seventh fret on the A string, then we play the ninth fret on the A string, and then back to the seventh. One more time, two low A's, frets eight and nine on the E string, two of fret seven on the A, and then fret nine and seven on the A. Let me play it slowly for you. And let's hear that with the drums. And that's pattern five. Same drill, you just play the same thing, starting on the one, the A, the four, the D, and the five, the E and then put that together in the right order and you've got another 12 bar blues bass line. As promised, in a moment I've got an extra bonus tip to help you with your 12 bar blues bass lines and you'll get the chance to win prizes including a signed copy of my latest solo CD, a Planet Waves guitar rest and a one hour private lesson over Skype with me. But first up we're going to draw the winners from last week's competition. First prize is a brand new set of GHS piccolo bass strings so let's spin the wheel and see who wins this. Here we go! Hey, Peter Barrett, you have won a brand new set of piccolo bass strings. So they're going to be coming to you uh, ever so soon. You'll need to drop me an email on scott at scott-whitley.com. Give me your address and we'll get those on the way to you. Next up is this signed copy of my brand new limited edition blue vinyl single. Here we go. Hey. Ooh! <laughs> there we go. It's it's Mark B. Oh my word! I thought that was Sean P. Bass. It's Mark B. Mark B. This is coming to you. Uh, send me an email on scott at scott-whitley.com, and I'll get your address and send that off to you. And finally, we got a signed copy of my new EP CD in my shoes. Let's see who's going to win this. Here we go. Let's spin the wheel. Sean P. Bass. So you did actually win this one. <laughs> this is on its way to you. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got your address already, but just send me an email on scott 
at scott-whitley.com and we'll get this off to you. To enter this week's competition, all you need to do is enter hashtag 12 bar bass in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on playing 12 bar blues bass. Is it something you've done a lot before? Are you new to it? Do you enjoy it? Whatever it is you've got to say about it, I'd love to hear it. Let's get some conversation going. But don't forget to get entered into the draw. You must include hashtag 12 bar bass. So finally, here's my quick 12 bar bonus tip. A simple and effective way to create movement in your bass lines when you're playing 12 bars is to approach the next chord chromatically. For example, if we're in the key of A and we want to move from the one chord to the four chord, so that would be the A to the D, we could do this. And then we land on the, the D, the four. One more time. A, one. Chromatic. Four. All I'm doing there is playing the three notes or frets that lead up to the next chord. So here's our destination, the four, the D. So what we do is play these three frets or notes that lead up to it. They're the ones that are kind of butted up against it, right? So you can choose to play that whenever you want to move from a one to a four within a 12 bar, and it's going to sound great. If you're moving the other way from the four to the one, you can use that same trick and approach the one from the three frets or notes below it. Check it out. And then we hit the one. One more time. Four, that's the four chord. Chromatically up to the one. Works great every time. Let me give you two more. Going from the one chord to the five chord. So that'll be the A to the E. We just approach the E from the three frets or notes below it. Check it out. And then we land on the five. And finally, we can use the same trick to go from the five to the one. Check it out. So here's the five. Here's the one. So we're going to start with a five and then play the three semitones or notes or frets leading up to the one. Check it out. From the five. And then we land on the one. One more time. Obviously, there are loads of other ways you can move between the chords, but this is a nice and easy one to get you started and it works really well universally. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to download the backing track and the worksheet. The links are in the description below. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.